Hello guys, uh, this is uh, David Villar and uh, welcome to this uh, first presentation on toxicants that affect the heart. On this one we discuss ionophores, avocado and methyl xanthines. On this uh, table of toxicants that affect the heart, ionophores uh, fit within the feed additives. Uh, the methyl xanthines uh, like caffeine and theobromine or cardiotoxic alkaloids. And avocados uh, fall within the miscellaneous uh, natural uh, toxicants. I have uh, borrowed a few slides from a colleague at Iowa State University on ionophores. Uh, these are uh, substances that can transport ions across a lipid membrane within a cell. They are all uh, feed additives uh, used to improve feed, feed efficiency and growth. Uh, they also have a coccidiostat action and they are also helpful preventing acidosis and bloat in uh, ruminants. So the main ionophores include monensin, lasalosis, selenomycin, ladomycin, and uh, narosin. And as we can see here, they are used in ruminants, chickens, turkeys, swine, basically all food producing animals. And the table shows some of the commercial names uh, for each one. Now the positive effects of ionophores uh, take place by reducing the gram-positive bacteria in favor of uh, gram-negative ones. Uh, that results in more propionic acid formation and less acetic acid and butyric acid. So basically the propionic acid in the rumen uh, gets absorbed, it gets to the liver and yields uh, more uh, glucose molecules and therefore there are more uh, kilocalories uh, that are produced by propionic acid uh, instead of the butyric and acetic acid. This is what this uh, other slide shows. Uh, when we give monensin, the production of propionic acid increases and the other two uh, volatile fatty acids either stay the same or uh, decrease. In other words, uh, there is a shift in on the volatile as fatty acid production in the rumen uh, going from acetic acid and butyric acid towards uh, propionic acid. Now this slide explains the mechanism of toxicity with, uh, with an ionophore over overdose, uh, the homeostatic uh, mechanisms uh, fail to maintain those ions across the membranes uh, such that uh, calcium and sodium increase within the cells and that causes uh, free radical formation and oxidative damage uh, to tissues. This uh, figure uh, suggests a probable sequence of events uh, by monensin in uh, muscle cells. Uh, we start with a high intracellular sodium that leads to a secondary uh, rise in uh, intracellular calcium. And this leads to mitochondrial swelling and damage with it, which uh, turns uh, into a lack of energy and ultimately death of those uh, muscle cells. Apparently, it is the production of uh, free radicals that cause the lipid peroxidation and the disruption of those uh, cell membranes. If we talk about the pharmacokinetics of monensin and, and other uh, ionophores, it is uh, crucial to under, uh, it's actually crucial to understand its uh, toxicity. Uh, most of the amount ingested is poorly absorbed and the fraction that gets to the liver is rapidly metabolized or biotransformed by cytochrome P450s such that there is a huge uh, first pass uh, effect uh, to prevent it from entering the systemic circulation. Uh, the metabolites uh, get excreted into the bile and expelled with the feces. And I want to highlight the importance of this uh, P450 uh, action in the liver because if the ionophores are combined with, for example, uh, macrolide antibiotics such as uh, erythromycin or thiamulin, uh, this uh, detoxification mechanism is inhibited and the monensin will enter into the systemic circulation and can make a therapeutic dose of monensin uh, become toxic. Uh, this slide shows the acute toxicity in terms of the LD50 in different animal species. Uh, the horse is the most sensitive species with an LD50 of 2 to 3 milligrams per kilogram. In cattle, it's around 26 milligrams per kilogram, which is 10 times higher than horses. And in chickens, it's uh, 214 milligrams per, uh, per kilogram. So it's uh, almost uh, uh, a uh, hundred times higher than uh, horses. So the implications for this is that if horses are exposed to therapeutic doses uh, for food animals, uh, we can kill them. And in fact, most cases reported in horses uh, took place by a history of eat eating uh, feed that was uh, destined for uh, food producing animals. Obviously, it can also happen by mixing uh, mistakes uh, by the food co producing company whether, whether there was an equipment failure, an excess uh, 
by using the wrong bag or supplement, an incomplete uh, equipment flushing, or some other mistakes uh, by, by, uh, when th they are uh, preparing the food for uh, different animal species. Now, if we look at the cl uh, clinical presentation, it varies uh, with the species and the dose ingested. In general, there is a latent uh, period between 12 hours up to, seven to 72 hours uh, before the onset of signs. And most of the species uh, will show an anorexia, ataxia, dyspnea, uh, weakness, diarrhea, and possibly a sudden death. Now, uh, so lethally affected animals uh, may linger for more than a week uh, and eventually uh, weeks, and they can recover uh, even if they have uh, permanent uh, heart damage. Uh, in horses, uh, we have to add severe sweating and colic, apart from the signs that, that we just uh, mentioned. Uh, they can die suddenly, but as, uh, we, as uh, with all other species, uh, we also may see delayed uh, deaths at any time after an acute exposure. Now with uh, dogs and cats, uh, this is, uh, they are somewhat uh, unique because they manifest uh, flaccid ascending paralysis uh, that appears like botulism, and in fact they die usually because of uh, respiratory paralysis. Now this uh, slide shows a calf that was uh, showing anorexia, diarrhea, weakness, or ataxia. He was uh, dyspneic uh, from the heart failure, and because the heart was uh, failing, he had subcutaneous edema, a distended uh, jugular pulse, uh, bottle jaw, and all these signs are pointed with those uh, arrows in the image. So basically this photograph was uh, taken uh, 10 days after an acute exposure. Now the, the graph on this slide is from a case at Iowa State University in which uh, feedlot calves uh, were exposed to monensin at 20 to 30 times the therapeutic uh, dose. Uh, there were uh, 795 uh, head of animals that were exposed and 212 uh, ended up dying. On the graph it shows that a few animals died on the first couple of days, but as you can see the majority of them died uh, between uh, day uh, 5 and 13 after, after the acute exposure. And at that point uh, you will see the classical heart lesions uh, which uh, may be absent in those uh, that died uh, the first couple of days. Now the prolonged death in a few animals uh, that we see here after th uh, day 13 uh, shows that monensin uh, causes irreverse irreversible uh, heart lesions uh, and those animals may linger and be sick for weeks uh, before they die. Now this is a case of a narasin excess exposure in pigs. Uh, it took place in Oklahoma and uh, we will discuss this uh, in more detail later. And I just wanted to show you the video. So um, it's very uh, dramatic, as you can see, there is uh, increased uh, vocalization, those uh, peaks are painful, uh, they are unable to rise and move, and they adopt a dog sitting position. Uh, these peaks also had anorexia, tremors, uh, collapse, uh, but uh, at least they were all centrally aware, uh, there is no CNS uh, involvement. On these images, we see the lesions of a mare that died uh, seven days after an acute exposure to monensin. Uh, there is edema in the abdominal cavity and the pericardium surrounding the heart. Uh, you may notice some pale areas on the surface of the heart, uh, together with some uh, hemorrhagic spots. And when the histopath is done uh, on the myocardium, it will reveal uh, fragmented uh, necrotic uh, myocytes uh, with infiltration of white blood cells. So as you can probably tell by now, uh, the type of samples that we need to collect and test uh, in order to make a diagnosis uh, are pretty uh, straightforward. In horses and cattle, the main target organs for the lesions is the heart, even if we don't see any uh, gross uh, visible lesions. 
uh, we, we should always collect samples of the heart uh, for doing histopath and ideally take sections from the left uh, papillary muscles. In other species like swine, sheep and dogs, the main target organ is the skeletal, is, are the skeletal muscles, uh, not the heart. So we should take samples from, from muscles like the gluteal, the loins, the quadriceps, the diaphragm uh, for doing histopath. And a definitive diagnosis uh, will require testing the feet for ionophores uh, because the lesions are non-specific and could happen with other toxicants like we just like we saw for oleander and some other toxicants that we will discuss on this uh, uh, module. Now we are going to see a couple of cases in cattle and pigs, um, but before that I wanted to mention that uh, antibiotics like the macrolides and particularly thiamulin should never be given at the same time as uh, ionophores because they inhibit those uh, P450 um, um, cytochromes in the liver uh, which are necessary to metabolize the ionophores. So the situations in which intoxications will happen is by giving, for example, thiamulin in water or feed uh, together with the ionophores in feed. The therapeutic dose basically of the ionophore will become toxic when mixed uh, with uh, macrolides. Now, thiamulin is the active principle of uh, Denegard, which is an antibiotic used to treat uh, respiratory infections in peak. And Skysis uh, 100 is the ionophore uh, narasin that is the most often used in pigs. So just remember that both uh, drugs can never be uh, mixed together. Now the first case is in cattle in, at, at, at uh, two feedlots in Kansas. Uh, this took place back in 1999, but as the title uh, says, it was uh, feeding monensin with uh, dried distillers uh, grains that were contaminated with uh, macrolide antibiotics. On the first uh, feedlot, there were uh, 988 head of cattle and they started dying at uh, six days uh, after the ingestion. And by week eight, uh, there were a total of 562 animals out of the 988 that uh, had uh, died. The main signs uh, reported were anorexia, ataxia, dyspnea, uh, weakness, diarrhea, uh, recumbency, and obviously uh, death. And as we mentioned, uh, in cattle, the main gross uh, lesions uh, are found in the heart uh, the image on the right is a cross-section of the ventricular walls uh, with, area, with areas of uh, hemorrhage that uh, look dark, uh, or dark red. And uh, others, uh, there are other areas that are pale looking, uh, which are pointed with the arrowheads. Uh, this steer was uh, euthanized and necropsied uh, seven days uh, following the contaminated ration. And in these animals, there were, there were also extensive uh, skeletal muscle degeneration and necrosis, which is shown uh, with the arrowhead uh, that is uh, pointing to a pale area uh, compared with the normal looking one um, pointed with the arrow. Now, these, uh, these are the histopath uh, lesions. Uh, on top, we see the necrotic uh, cardiac uh, fibers uh, with lots of uh, striations. And the ones uh, pointed with the arrow shows a fiber uh, with uh, nuclear uh, pycnosis, uh, uh, hypercontraction bands. And the lower image shows the same type of lesions in the skeletal muscle. There is infiltration of lymph lymphocytes and macrophages. And basically the toxicology analysis revealed the presence of uh, erythromycin at uh, concentrations between uh, 50 and 100 and 1,500 parts per million. Uh, that were present in the distiller's uh, grains. If the animal survives uh, long enough, he may be a poor doer and never really thrift because uh, some of those uh, lesions are uh, irreversible in the heart. In this slide, we see the heart of a steer that was sacrificed after six weeks of the incident. And at that point, the necrotic uh, myocytes uh, have been replaced with uh, fibrous uh, connective tissue. In other words, uh, scar tissue. Uh, which is uh, pointed with the arrowheads. Now, uh, next, uh, let's uh, look at the case uh, in finishing uh, pigs. It, it include, I included the link that describes uh, this case uh, that took place in Oklahoma. There were uh, 3,000 pigs uh, of uh, 19 weeks of age, and 80, 86 of them died, and 415 had to be sacrificed. Uh, there was uh, an equipment failure that allowed the ionophore to be mixed with the diet 
at concentrations between 139 and 645 parts per million, uh, when the normal level should be at uh, 30 parts per million. And as we saw in the video earlier, the pigs were ataxic, vocalizing very loudly uh, because of the pain in those uh, skeletal, skeletal muscles. Uh, they were, they were uh, recumbent or dog sitting, unable to stand up as uh, we will see uh, next. And basically the main target organ in pigs is the uh, skeletal uh, muscle. In this uh, slide, uh, the asterisk is pointing to a segmental muscle fiber uh, that is uh, degenerating and undergoing uh, necrosis. And you can tell the difference between those fibers above the, uh, and below that appear uh, normal. On this other slide, we see the wide variation in the severity of lesions uh, between some uh, skeletal muscles in the same pig. Image uh, A is the esophagus, in which there is extensive infiltration of macrophages uh, in between those uh, myofibers. On image uh, B, uh, this is the diaphragm, uh, which shows, uh, which shows uh, moder moderate uh, infiltration with fibers that are regenerating. And this is an important finding because unlike the heart muscles, uh, the skeletal muscle can regenerate if the animal survives uh, long enough uh, from the acute uh, phase of the intoxication. In image uh, C, this is the ham, ham muscle uh, that shows very small muscle fibers that are regenerating. Uh, this is even more obvious in section D, which is the loin. And you can see all those uh, small looking fibers uh, that are actually regenerating and replacing uh, fibers that were uh, lost. So the conclusions in this case was that pigs uh, had anorexia during the incident. They went from uh, consuming 1.9 kilograms of feed to 0.75 kilograms. Uh, when they were sent to the slaughterhouse nine weeks uh, after the incident, uh, they weighed uh, 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 four kilograms uh, lower uh, that uh, from from animals that di did not have the the intoxication. The fee, their, their feed conversion rate was also lower after the incident and after seven days on the new feed there were uh, no new cases and after uh, f uh, 14 days on the new feed all clinical signs uh, had disappeared. So as you can see pigs uh, can feel, uh, fully recover after an intoxication with ionophores and this is because the skeletal muscle will regenerate uh, something which is unlikely to happen in cattle or uh, horses. Uh, because, uh, as, we, as we mentioned earlier, uh, in horses and cattle, it is the heart uh, which is the main target uh, organ. Now, the next toxicant is uh, avocados. All parts of the plant, the leaves, the fruit, the bark, uh, the seeds, uh, have been reported to be toxic. Uh, not all var varieties of avocados are equally toxic. It seems like uh, the Guatemala and the na navel uh, variety are the most toxic. And the toxin targets the heart and the mammary gland, in which uh, basically it causes an uninfectious uh, mastitis, and that obviously results in uh, decreased uh, milk production and uh, elevated uh, somatic cell counts. In horses uh, that uh, ingest a toxic dose, uh, the main two target organs, uh, as we just uh, mentioned, are the mammary gland and the heart. And when the heart fails, the animal tends to develop edemas, uh, in uh, the case of horses, this tends to happen in the lips, uh, the eyelids, uh, the neck, the pharynx. And some horses will have uh, colic, uh, not always, and there will be an elevation of uh, creatinine ki uh, kinase, uh, AST, uh, which are basically indicators of either heart or skeletal muscle uh, damage. There are some experimental studies in goats and mice. In goats, uh, given the lower dose of uh, 20 grams per kilogram, of leaves, uh, the signs uh, were mostly confined to the mammary gland, and at higher doses, above 30 grams per kilogram of leaves, there was uh, cardiac damage. And the same thing was found in mice, uh, given uh, persing, which is the toxin. At lower doses, they developed mastitis, and at higher doses, they had uh, myocardial uh, necrosis. There are some uh, cases uh, reported in cage uh, birds and ostriches. And I am including in this slide uh, some of the, the titles and the reference if you would like to read more about avocados in other species. 
The final topic is on methyl xanthines, uh, which are uh, the toxic principles in chocolate. Uh, we could uh, have included them in toxicants that uh, stimulate the CNS, but uh, death uh, usually results from uh, tachyarrhythmias, so we're going to include them in, in this uh, hard, uh, hard uh, section. There are three types of uh, methyl xanthines that are caffeine, theophylline, uh, theobromine, and if we look at the amounts in different types of chocolate, the baking chocolate is the most toxic uh, with about uh, four, uh, 40 milligrams of caffeine and close to 400 milligrams of theobromine uh, for every ounce of uh, chocolate. Most cases, as you probably all know, uh, uh, happen in dogs uh, and tend to uh, occur in, at holidays like Valentine's Day, Easter time, Halloween, Christmas, and so on. Now, there are three basic mechanisms of action. Uh, the one with uh, the greatest uh, sensitivity with more uh, clinical relevance is the competitive antagonism of uh, cellular uh, ad adenosine uh, receptors. Uh, this uh, one is basically responsible for the CNS stimulation, the constriction of some uh, blood vessels, and the tachyarrhythmias. The second one uh, with intermediate sensitivity is the inhibition of uh, calcium uh, sequestration or reuptake uh, in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the net, the net, uh, the net effect is increasing cal of increasing calcium is obviously associated with a greater uh, contractility of the skeletal and the cardiac muscles. And the one with the least sensitivity is the inhibition of ph phosphodiesterase, uh, which enhances the action of uh, catecholamines. Now, we could go on talking about the toxicity of methyl xanthines, but I have tried to simplify it, uh, it because uh, using basically ballpark values when calculating how much an animal has ingested, if the combination of the caffeine and theobromine is around 100 milligrams per kilogram, that can be a lethal dose. And at lower doses of 20 milligrams per kilogram, the main signs uh, will be just uh, GI, uh, GI tract uh, involvement. Uh, between between uh, 40 and 50 milligrams per kilogram, we can expect GI and cardiac signs. And at doses uh, between 60 and 100 milligrams per kilogram, we can expect all three uh, GI, cardiac, and neurological signs. The most uh, re relevant aspects of the kinetics are the, uh, uh, the slow absorption. Uh, chocolate stays in the stomach for a long time, even up to 12 hours. So uh, delayed emesis uh, can be a, a way to uh, decontaminate the animal. Uh, the other, uh, there is also uh, uh, entero hepatic uh, recirculation uh, that takes place after the, the excretion in bile, and there is also elimination in the urine. As you can see here, the half-life of uh, theobromine in dogs is uh, comparatively long with 17.5 uh, uh, hours compared to caffeine, which is only uh, 4.5 hours. And this uh, long half-life implies that the animal will probably need to be observed uh, for at least three to four days. Now, the most uh, common and usually the initial uh, signs is uh, vomiting, uh, chocolate, uh, this may be followed with uh, uh, chocolate diarrhea, uh, polyuria, just like we, when we have a lot of, uh, just, just like when we drink a lot of coffee. Agitation and hyperactivity, the same as uh, if we drink a lot of coffee. Hyperthermia, cardiac tachyarrhythmias, uh, tremors, and with extreme doses, the animal may even uh, seizure. Uh, a way that has been described an intoxicated dog is that they bounce when they are picked up and dropped a few inches on, onto its feet. And with regards to the treatment, it's basically symptomatic and, and supportive. Uh, for the tachyarrhythmia, the, the drug of choice is uh, lidocaine or uh, beta blockers like uh, esmolol or uh, metoprolol. And we give those initially with a bolus and, and then follow with a constant rate of infusion. Activated charcoal every six hours for three times can bind the theobromine that is uh, excreted with bile and prevent that uh, enterohepatic uh, recirculation. IV fluids will also enhance the elimination through the urine. And if the animal exhibits uh, CNS uh, agitation, we can use tranquilizers like acepromacin, 
uh, butorphanol or diazepam. So this is the final uh, slide, guys. Uh, on the next video, we will continue talking about more uh, toxicants that affect the heart. So until next one, uh, take care and bye-bye uh, for now.